before we get into the video guys um unless you've been living under a rock even if you have been you should know this past sunday unfortunately we lost kobe bryant gg bryant and seven others to a horrific helicopter crash and um it still doesn't seem real to me um I'm still extremely shocked. Like, I came into, like, I was going to talk about Kobe and I had a plan and I just forgot it all. Like, I I'm still at a loss for words. But um, just to say a couple things on Kobe, I was never, like, the biggest Kobe fan, I guess you could say. Um, I obviously, like, I had love for him. I respected him because he was just, like, the ultimate competitor. Um, he was not a quitter, you know, and he would always go out and give his hardest. And Kobe... What he came from, from Laura Marion High School, 17-year-old, 13th overall pick, and literally worked his way up because he didn't come into the league with the athleticism or the great play that some of these amazing guys come in with, like LeBron James. You know, he you know, he didn't have like that. Obviously, he was still athletic, but his game was practice. It was like man-made. You know, it wasn't gifted, if, if you understand what I mean. So, yeah, I mean... He's a legend, of course. His name will live on forever. Um, and it, it just doesn't seem real, bro. Like, I thought Kobe was one of those guys where, like, they were basically immortal. I didn't think anything could ever happen to him. I mean, you talk about losing your life at the age of 41 when your life is pretty much just beginning. Um, the tragic, like, how you lost it to in a helicopter crash. Um, it, it, it's very devastating, very devastating. So once again, rest in peace to Kobe Bryant, rest in peace to Gigi and rest in peace to the seven other victims who lost their lives this past Sunday. And, um, and yeah, uh, yeah, I don't know how I'm going to segue into this, but I guess we'll go in with the video guys. What is up guys? So sports back again with another video. And in today's video, I'm going to be giving my predictions for the 2020 NBA All-Star Reserves. So if you didn't know, the starters were already picked, they were already named, and I'm just gonna name them off for you if you weren't aware of who they are. So for the Eastern Conference, the backcourt starters are Trey Young and Kemba Walker, and the frontcourt starters are Giannis Antetokounmpo, Pascal Siakam, and Joel Embiid. And for the Western Conference, the two backcourt starters are Luka Doncic and James Harden and the front court starters are LeBron James who is the captain excuse me Giannis is the captain for the east LeBron is the captain for the west um Kawhi Leonard and Anthony Davis so those are the starters so now let's just get into the reserves who I believe are going to be the reserves now let me emphasize on that this is what I believe so if you guys think something else that's cool you can go make your own list or whatever I mean this is my list so uh don't get too hurt in the comments if you don't see like your favorite player get or whatever i don't know but uh with that being said let's get into it i'm gonna start off with the eastern conference so this is not like an order or whatever i'm just gonna name them off so reserve the first guy i'm gonna talk about is ben simmons so i think ben simmons despite all the hate he's had this year about not shooting the ball or whatever i think he still deserves to be an all-star if you look at his statistics this year He's actually having a really good season. I mean, 16 points, nearly eight rebounds, eight assists, and he's playing elite defense. He, he's been great. And we saw a little bit of what he's like without um, Joel when Joel was out with that uh, finger injury. And he had some pretty good games against Brooklyn. 42 minutes played, 34 points, 12 rebounds, 12 assists. You have this um, game against Indiana, 24 and 14. I mean, he's had some pretty good games. And they've had some convincing wins i mean right here they beat the lakers where he had 28 points 10 rebounds 8 assists shot 12 15 from the field uh he deserves it he deserves i'm just he deserves it whatever you can say about his he's scared to shoot whatever he deserves it just know that and he will in fact be a reserve this year whether you like it or not so next player i'm gonna name is bradley bill now bradley bill he's been on a tear this year though his team has been pre um his team hasn't even been bad. They've just been horrendous on defense. Let's just say that. But um, again, he's averaging nearly 29 points per game on 45% shooting from the field and six assists. If you look at his past four games, you can go to the last four games. 
Against Miami, 38 points on 16 and 24 shooting. Against Cleveland, this was a back to back, by the way. 36 points, 8 assists on 15 to 22 shooting. 40 points again against the Hawks about what three days ago or four days ago now. And then against the Bucks, the Milwaukee Bucks, best team in the league. 47 points. Though he didn't shoot that well, but still 47 points is still 47 points. But once again, Bradley Bill has been a consistent not a consistent, but steadily just has improved every single year of his career. Well, not every single year, but he's improved a lot. You know, last year was a great year for him. And this year, he's just topped that. 28.6 points on 45% shooting and six assists. That's incredible. Those are all-star numbers, and he will definitely be an all-star this year. Now, for my first forward, Jimmy Butler. Do I even have to talk much about him? Jimmy Butler has the Miami Heat. I don't know. Are they still the second seed? I think they've fallen off a little bit. They've, they've, they've fallen off a bit. Yeah, they're not the second seed anymore. They're the third seed still, though. Only a game behind that second seed. They're 5-5 five and five in their last 10, but it's fine. He has the Miami Heat at 32-15. and 15, And everywhere he's went, he's just improved the team drastically. This year, his stats may not say it, but 20 points, 7 rebounds, 6 assists. That's still extremely great. You know, on 44% shooting, he also gives you defense. Great player, amazing player. Will definitely be an all-star this year. And um, yeah, he's he's taking the Heat to the bigger, better things. I'll make a video separately on the Heat. Are they contenders? Are they legit? Can they legitly beat these top teams, or are they just you know like one of those regular season dominant teams? I'll talk about that in a later video. But either way, let's continue on with my second forward position or front court position excuse me that's chris middleton um again another player do i have to say much Pe people might say this is controversial but i think chris middleton definitely deserves to be an all-star i mean you talk about a guy who this season is putting up 20 points on 50 percent shooting from the field 40 percent shooting from three and 90 percent shooting from the free throw line and if i'm looking back in history players to average 20 points per game on 50, 40, 90. And it's not even like 40. It's 43% from three. I think it's him, Stephen Curry, Kevin Durant, Larry Bird, and Dirk Nowinski. I think there's one more player that I'm forgetting. I'm sorry. I, you guys, you guys, just name them in the comments. There's one other guy that I'm forgetting, but still. 20 on 50, 40, 90. You're on the best team in the league. He, he's going to be an all-star. You know, he's going to be voted in by the coaches. I mean, his play has been amazing this year. He's been a great second option to Giannis Antetokounmpo. Last night or two two nights ago, excuse me, he just put up 51 points. I mean, it's what all stars do. <laughs> you know what I mean? But um, moving on. Now here's where things get a little iffy. So this was a big decision of mine. The Boston Celtics, I believe, will have two all stars. Now we already know that Kemba Walker is a starter. So who else would make on that team? There are two other options: Jalen Brown or Jason Tatum. And I went with Jason Tatum strictly because. I don't think I don't think Jalen Brown fits that criteria of being a front court player because he is technically a shooting guard or whatever. That's one reason. Also, I think uh, Jason Tatum has more fan votes, but I don't know if fan votes count when you're picking reserves. I think reserves are strictly like coaches pick. Like nothing else matters. What the coaches pick? I think I'm not too sure. But anyways, I think Jason Tatum will make it again. His team, um, they are the fourth seed, I believe. No, yeah, the fourth seed. Um, Talk about a guy who's putting up 21 and a half points, six, seven rebounds, essentially. Not shooting the best for a forward, but I mean, he's still great. Do I think he's better than Jalen Brown? No, I think Jalen Brown is better than Jason Tatum because Jalen Brown gives you essentially the same stats and a lot better defense, like way, way, way better defense. So there's that. But I think that weird, like technically Jalen Brown is a backcourt guy. I think that's the reason why he won't make it, but... Yeah, I think, you know, Jalen Brown can make it next year. But this year, I feel like Jason Tatum will make it. And now time for the two wild card spots, essentially. The first one is Kyle Lowry. Do I even have to, like, go into depth? Kyle Lowry, nearly what? I think he's averaging, like, 19 and 7. Raptors are the second seed. Don't need to go into much depth about that. And then the final spot, I believe, goes to DeMontis. Wait. Yeah, DeMontis Sabonis, if I'm saying his name correctly. I'm sorry, but you guys know Indiana Pacers power forward slash center. He's been amazing this year. And the fact that I believe he was a second round pick just makes it even better. And the fact that the Thunder had him and traded him away for two years of, of um, what's his name, Paul George. 
I mean, I guess we didn't know that he would become what he is today, but his father was amazing, so you had to know he had at least some talent. This year, he's putting up 18 points, 12.8 rebounds, almost five assists, shooting 54% from the field. The Pacers, I think the Pacers actually are the fourth seed, not the Boston Celtics. If I can just look really quickly. Oh, no, they're the fifth seed, but they're, they're a game back. So, either way, they're doing fantastic. They have Victor Oladipo back now. They could be a dark horse team to make the finals. I don't know, but I think he deserves it. So, let's go over a few, like, snubs, I guess, if you want to say that. Obviously, I think the biggest one that you guys are wondering about is Bam Adebayo. Bam Adebayo has had a fantastic season, of course, with Miami Heat, but I just think Sabonis deserves it more. Bam, I don't know. I mean, he, he's great, of course. Bam has been amazing, and he'll... No, never mind. I was going to say he's going to win most improved, but I think Brandon Ingram got that a lot. Bam is averaging 16 points, 10 rebounds, nearly 5 assists also, and 59% shooting. But I, I don't. I just feel like Sabonis is more deserving. It could go either way. Bam could get in. I would not be upset if either or made it. I would not be surprised if either or made it. But just for me personally, I think Sabonis is probably more deserving. His stats are just a tad bit better. And then um, any other snubs in the East? I'm trying to think of maybe Kyrie. But then Kyrie, he does not meet the game requirements, so I don't think he'll be in the All Star game this year. Um, yeah, that's my Eastern Conference All Star reserves. Now, let's go to the Western Conference. So, the first guard I'm going to talk about, Damian Lillard. Do I have to even talk about what this man has done over the past couple of games? I mean, you talk about a guy who's going on an absolute tear. A guy who's putting the team on his back. Looking at his last couple of games. Last night, 36-point triple-double. Two, three nights ago, four nights ago, excuse me, 50 points, 13 assists against the Pacers. In Dallas, or at Dallas, I'm not sure. 47 points 61 points against the um, Warriors before that 34 34 25 30. he's he's been dominant and he deserves to make an all-star team and he will 29 points nearly eight assists on the season though the Blazers are not playing up to par I, I he still deserves it come on now next player Russell Westbrook now if you would have asked me would Russell Westbrook be an all-star in like November I probably would have said no but I mean I think this recent stretch he's had in January it's gonna get him in you know he's been averaging I believe over 30 points since January started and he's been efficient too it's not like he's been throwing up bricks uh, last night against the Blazers even though they lost 39 points on 16 to 29 shooting you go to at Denver 32 points on 14 to 29 shooting at, at Minnesota 45 on 16 to 27 you get the idea he's been efficient he's been scoring the ball he's been passing he's been rebounding he's been doing it all and all this while James Harden has been in his little slump or whatever Russ has been kind of carrying the team and now he's averaging 26 points eight rebounds seven assists on 46 percent shooting nearly he's deserving now let's get to the front court first guy is Brandon Ingram do I need to say more? I mean, okay, Brandon Ingram is, you know, he's kind of a question mark. He could, he could not, but I think he will. Um, I don't think there's any other forward that could take his spot. 26 points or 25 points. He's going to win most improved player this year. And he's going to get a huge contract extension this offseason. The Pelicans are still fighting for that eighth seed. Maybe they'll make it. Maybe they won't. I don't know. I think it's kind of too late now. The Grizzlies are peaking. They're playing well, but yeah, he's been killing it. Next front court spot Nikola Jokic again a guy who started off slow similar to um Russell Westbrook but has picked it up he has the Nuggets in the playoff race I believe they're the fourth seed right now or the third seed you know they're up there one or the other almost 20 points 10 rebounds 7 assists nearly 50% from the field he's going to make it once again and then for my final front court spot Rudy Gobert <laughs> I want to add a little bit of suspense. Rudy Gobert. I'll talk about the other center that you guys are probably like, oh, he should have made it over him. We'll discuss that. But Rudy Gobert is deserving. You could say he got snubbed last year. I don't know. This year, I think he's deserving. Nearly 16 points, nearly 15 rebounds. And he's going to win Defensive Player of the Year probably once again. He's shooting 68% from the field. And, oh, he's blocking two shots per game. He's just killing it. He's that anchor for that Jazz team who I believe is now the second seed. They've been killing it. And um, let's go to the two wild cards. I'm going to go over them really quickly. Devin Booker and Donovan Mitchell, man. I mean, they, they're so deserving. Devin Booker, you can say he's been snubbed multiple times. 
I kind of agree. I think last year he probably should have made it. This year, if he does not make it, then it will just be a travesty. He 100% deserves it. Only 23 years old, putting up 27 points on 51% shooting from the field, 37% from the uh, from three, and 91% from the free throw line. Though the Phoenix Suns, they're, they're still actually in the playoff race. They're like three and a half games back, but you know they aren't doing as hot as they were in the beginning of the year. Still deserving. And Donovan Mitchell, he's putting up kind of similar stats he's definitely not shooting as good as Devin Booker is but again another guy who's deserving again his team is winning uh similar to Rudy Gobert I mean their teammates 25 points four rebounds four assists 46 percent from the field deserves it and now we can go over some snubs if you guys are interested in that so I think I'm gonna go over one snub Carl Anthony Towns I know I know I know you guys Cat is putting up 26 and 12. He's the best offensive center, blah, 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 blah. Guys, I love Cat. I love Carl Anthony Towns, man, but his team sucks. He's His team is horrible. They are. They went from, like, the, what, the fourth seed to, like, the 14th seed? In the beginning, after everybody was like, oh, this team is looking like a playoff team, Carl Anthony Towns is playing, like, a MVP, potentially. It's, it's gotten extremely bad extremely bad over their last 10 games they are 0 of 10 they just blew an 18 point lead in like the final two minutes against the kings a couple nights ago cat is putting up great numbers but for one his team sucks two he's missed what 17 of the of the 47 games if, if he played every single game maybe but even then it's, it's still, nah, I don't think so. I don't think he'll make it this year. Other snubs, Paul George may be over Ingram, but Paul George has missed a lot of time. I don't think he'll make it again this year. Um, Chris Paul, potentially. I think Russell Westbrook's recent like stretch, I think it puts him over Chris Paul, unfortunately. Um, I would have loved to see Chris Paul. I would love to see. Actually, I'm talking as if this is final. This is not final. So I would love to see Chris Paul make the all-star team, but I just don't think so. I think that Russell's, yeah, his stretch is just too good to not let him make the all-star game. But, yeah, those are my picks. That's what I think. That's what I believe. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. The reserves, I believe they're supposed to be announced today in a couple of hours. So, look out for that. With that being said, we're on the road to 60 subs, guys. Please hit that subscribe button. Please hit that like button if you like the video. Share with your friends if you're new. And with that being said, it's So Sports, and I'm out. Peace.